Um, I wanted to start on time because uh, I thought we just let me take ten minutes before I introduce. Uh, well, before Paris's, Dr. Persis Karim comes comes up, and I I, I really should begin by uh, saying that this has been the most incredible collaboration. This is San Francisco State University. There's, there's a very special history and legacy, and it continues, and tonight, you will see. We all know, and tonight we're going to, to um, it's not really, a, tonight is not really entertainment, um, or even celebration, because it was six months to this evening that the protests in Iran uh, ignited, and um, I had hoped that tonight would have been a celebration of resolution. But there's a resolution of another kind that's happening now. And uh, we're here this evening to, uh, to raise uh, the spirits and bring a, um, a consciousness together with our sisters, nieces, mothers, grandmothers, cousins back home and create a global consciousness together. And there's no, no better place than here, right here in Knuth Hall. So um, before taking any more time with that, I thought I uh, found something um, that I thought we might appreciate, uh, especially for our American or non-Iranian colleagues uh, to experience all the different uh, peoples of Iran. And uh, a couple of uh, our, our students here put together some, um, some, some musical accompaniment. I just chose the musical company for it. So um, it's, it's with great appreciation for the, um, the Center for uh, Iranian Diaspora Studies and, um, and Dr. Persis Karim, who um, really um, galvanized uh, this evening, or oh, this whole month. We had, we had quite a month of events. And also to Steve Dickerson, the Poetry Center, for, for, for making this happen, with, along with, uh, yes, um, and the, uh, the, the college, Live on Creative Arts, uh, the Extraordinary Ideas Grant that helped us to bring back alum, alum who've been in the area. Um, tonight is, is, is making history on, on many fronts, and you'll, you'll appreciate um, many firsts that happen here on this stage. As we, as we move along. So um, there's also the departments of uh, history and philosophy, women and gender studies, um, and of course the School of Music, and so, uh, and uh, College of Ethnic Studies. And so just all together, uh, this is um, an expression of uh, what we do here at San Francisco State. So um, we'll take about 10 minutes. This is community. The doors are going to stay open, and um, if you need to, you know, come or go. But hopefully, you'll you'll stay. And we're going to watch something, take up a few minutes, and then um, Dr. Kelly will come up and, and explain some more things, and I'll introduce the first group. So, thank you again for coming. Sit close, close that out. Thank you. 
these are some of our relatives. And before we go any further, and before uh, Dr. Persis kind of speaks, and we get into uh, the rest of tonight, I'd like to read some more of our relatives who are here, who've always been here, who continue. And we begin with the Ramatush, the Chakta, and the Chippewa, Khorasaniha, Lakota, Lumbi, Luri, Kordi, Kiowa, Chickasaw, Sirkasianiha, Hopi, Asiri, Mescalero, Apache, Aluchi, Cherokee, Gilaki, Gilani, Menomini, Bandari, Mozandaroni, Iroquois, Yaki, Ozari, Kashkai, Achtiari, Otawatami, Yahudi, Azerbaijani, Talesh, Shayan, Shoshone, Seminole, Yuman, Mandayan, Cree, Kuli, Crow, Arapaho, Navajo, Armaniha, Yakama, Turkiman, Ut, Tat, Pars, Miwakme. These are some of our relatives. Hope you understand how, how deep and important that connection is to the indigenous peoples of this planet who are united. And as you can see in Iran, it's a unity of the peoples, these linguistic groups, the tribal unity, and we're just very grateful to have the ancestors working very hard to bring woman, life, freedom to a, a place that can transform the uh, structures, the structural, the structural change within all of our institutions, and um, and that's why it's also a very auspicious occasion to have this evening here at San Francisco State. So, uh, without further ado, Paris. Thank you, Hafez. Uh, one of the great privileges of being here is having such a cool colleague like that. So thank you. And thank you for the beautiful slideshow. Um, this is the third time I've seen this, and each time I'm really moved by the idea of seeing human faces, because so much of the news about Iran erases the humanity of the people there. And I think that's one of the things that's so inspiring about the movement that has happened since September is that we as American as global citizens are seeing the humanity of Iranians in the face of great state repression and state violence. Um, I want to also welcome you to San Francisco State. Uh, it's really wonderful to have this opportunity to be together and um, it's been a really long process of us thinking this through back in the fall when the Woman Life Freedom Movement erupted on September 16th. Many of us here on this campus were thinking about what we could do both for the people of Iran but also for our students to help them grapple with this moment because many of us understood that it was indeed a very big moment. It's not just about Iran, but we're living through an age where the rise of patriarchal authoritarian systems is um, gaining ground, including right here in the United States. Um, I keep telling my students over and over again, and anybody who listens, I tell them, we just lost one of the most important rights that women have over their own bodily autonomy. And as you probably heard from the news in the last few days, they're now talking about taking away yet more rights. Um, the right for women to purchase uh, abortion medications um, is one, and also the attack on 
queer and transgender people is an extension of that same kind of authoritarianism. I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to collaborate. One of the great things about being at San Francisco State, and I was at San Jose State before I came here, is that the colleagues here are deeply committed to social justice. The ethos of this campus is about social justice. It's in our DNA. It's something that many of us take very seriously. Um, and so working with Steve Dickison from the Poetry Center, Hafez Modir Zadeh, in the School of Music, and our other colleague, Tanya Foster, who's the George and Judy Marcus Endowed Professor in Creative Writing, we came together and said, let's do something. Let's put our heads together, our hearts together, and make something beautiful from this moment. Uh, we came together in the spirit of poetry, music, art, to lend our voices to the young people of Iran. Any of you who know about Iran know that students have always been on the front line there, and they've also been on the front lines here. Um, right now, six months into this movement, young women and girls are leading this movement. They continue to do so um, at great cost to their personal safety. I don't think I need to tell you some of the statistics, but I will anyway. 17,000 people have been arrested. Um, we don't even know how many of them are continuously detained. Um, more than 570 people have been killed by state violence. Many of those are young people, and at least 60 of them are under the age of 18. Um, this is not a new struggle. It's just uh, one, of a many, uh, one of many responses to state violence and state repression in Iran. Their resistance, however, has been deeply inspiring to many of us. And um, while you might not hear about it in the news as much as you did back in the fall, it's still there. And so part of what we're trying to do today is amplify their voices through the use of music and to create an atmosphere where we continue to um, lend our ears and our hearts and our hope to the people of Iran because if Iran is successful, many other people will also be successful. Some, some people in Iran have paid an especially high price. The people of Kurdistan and Baluchistan have been especially out for their responses to um, the state violence. Um, so it's really important to recognize that the systems, the structural systems that Hafez identified um, of attacking marginalized people, people who have less agency, people who have a greater sense of poverty and disenfranchise disenfranchisement is also occurring in Iran. So I really want to encourage you to stay awake and alert. Um, if you want to know what you can do, one of the things you can do is continue to amplify the voices of young people. Um, there are lots of social media handles. The Center for Human Rights in Iran is one, and also to support human rights organizations which are operating like journalist agencies as well as documentation of human rights abuses. Before I uh, and my comments, I also want to thank um, some of the people Hoff has already singled out, um, the Department of History and Philosophy, our college, the College of Liberal and Creative Arts made this possible. I want to thank our president for leading by example to um, continuously support the struggle of young people to help change the world. Um, I'm 60 years old, and I still believe we can change the world. I also want to thank some of the young people who volunteered their time today. Nazli Bozari, Ferdos Haidari, Hasti Jafari Jazani, um, and Mariam, as well as Nick Nguyen. Um, I have the great privilege of working with lots of young people, and they keep me on my toes. Um, and young people are, I think, what we must turn our attention to. Um, you know, when you think about students, um, they are the future. 
They are the future for solving most of the world's problems, whether it's war, human rights, or climate crisis. And I think we need to do a better job of listening. I also think that women and girls um, also have something to offer. So in this month of International, um, sorry, Women's History Month and International Women's Day, I want to also thank um, Supervisor, San Francisco Supervisor Asha Safai, who gave us a proclamation that we read last week. I unfortunately can't read it because it will take too much time, but um, proclaiming March International Iranian Women's History Month. So thank you. The slogan Zan Zanigi Azadi, Woman Life Freedom. I have never in my lifetime seen a slogan that so beautifully captures what we need now more than ever. Um, Woman Life Freedom is a, um, a chant that comes from the Kurdish struggle for resistance against state repression in um, Iran, Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. Um, and women there have been fierce in their efforts to um, deal with both patriarchy and the rights of national minorities to have autonomy. We have so much to learn from young people, and we have so much to learn from the people in Iran as they face down incredible state violence. Um, so I hope that it's on your radar, and part of what we're trying to do today is um, identify that this is not just over there. This is a, a moment in the globe where we have the opportunity to model something new. And I think the women and girls of Iran are showing us that. So, Zan Zendegi Azadi. Thank you. Identity. In fact, um, for my part, I'm I'm dedicating it to Professor Mitra Ara, who heads the Persian Studies program here at SF State for a long time, towing the line, helping our students uh, have access to uh, Persian languages. And uh, so, I wanted to mention that. And speaking of uh, um, language, the first performer this evening is from Kurdistan. And he's also the first to graduate here, to be graduating from here, hopefully soon, um, on the board. Um, this evening he'll be playing tambour. And I, I, I have this microphone up here so that everyone who, who uh, offers up the music and the spirit uh, for us this evening and for those across the globe and in Iran, tribute to the women in Iran who are paying the highest price. Um, this microphone is for, for them to be able to speak anything, anything that they feel that's on their heart and to introduce uh, what they want to, uh, to play for you. So um, we thought we'd begin tonight with the solo tambour of Simon Manhubi.
پیدا آمنی مهر دوا و کم تو هر زامنی تو تا پی و فکر سودای خاموی
great professional teacher, educator, and artist. He's one of our students, um, or at least uh, disguised as one. <laughs> uh, we have uh, actually some, uh, many, many here are, are, are students or have been students that are not alone coming back. And uh, in fact, I see some of the audience, and that's why I wanted to, to recognize um, Toranj. I want to pronounce your last name correctly. Iqyo um, Zalion, who is a graduate here in theater, who went on with a Golden Thread Productions. And I just want to, I want to acknowledge everyone that I can see who's coming back to, uh, to be here this evening to, to raise up. And also there's going to be a slideshow um, and, um, during intermission that um, uh, after a couple more performers at Paris says you could come up and tell us a very special slideshow for you all. So um, next is a, is a special duo, uh, and I can let them speak for themselves uh, this evening for you, but, um, and the, the, the artist on tar, Farin Sadari, is a, a friend I've just met, introduced uh, this evening. Uh, to us from um, Mima Gudars, a, a great uh, local um, vocalist of Persian traditional music. And um, we met as students of, uh, of my Ustad Mahmoud Zofanum, um, while we were both students with him. We met and um, collaborated together, and then years went by. I'm so honored that the two of them would would uh, perform for you this evening on Avaz and Taras, Mimo Gudaras and Farin Sadeh. Thank you so much for being here. Um, as I was talking to Hafiz, uh, first of all, Hafiz, thank you so much for the beautiful introduction. We really appreciate it. It's such an honor to be here and share this stage with all these wonderful um, artists. Uh, I was talking to Hafiz uh, behind the stage, and we were saying, um, this is a great performance, but more than anything, it's a praise for the people of Iran. We all pray for them, with them, um, and we pray for the freedom. Shabba hami gi bekhair. Sale no pisha pish bar hame mubarak. Mi dunam ke ensad hamamun qalbamun khali sangine. Vali in barnama ro ma taqdim mikunim be mardom Iran va to my wonderful husband and boys, thank you for being here. Please record our performance. <laughs> <laughs> مردی از خیش برون آید و کاری بکند گفتم این را و شگفتا که زنی پیدا شد تیشه این مرتبه در پنجه شیرین افتاد که زهر پنجه او کوکنی پیدا شد یا ما سر خصم را بکوبیم به سنگ یا او سر ما بدار سازد آونگ القصه در این زمانه پرنیرنگ یک کشته به نام به 
که صد زنده به
نادانی زنیم این عمل در عین استادی کنیم بکسرد زنجیر زندان سکوت ترک آن پندی که میدادی کنیم جملگی یک جان و یک دل میشویم جان فدای راه آزادی کنیم He's worked with all the greats, from Yoga Ma to Zaki Hussain. Recently heard him with Hussain Ali Zadeh. Comes from an illustrious family of artists. His father is a national treasure, Mustafa Akhavas, who's here this evening. Thank you, sir. So, uh, uh, Pajhan uh, graduated here a few years back after getting his bachelor's, moved on to his master's in the, in the pedagogy of, of the Tombak and, and Persian uh, metric um, possibilities. Uh, you know, like Sirvan, uh, they get scholarships here. I don't know if any other, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and brag a little bit because I don't know any other campus um, in the CSU that actually uh, recognizes these instruments as majors, that you can get a bachelor's or master's in. I mean, I just really, I don't know, let's get on words, right? So, um, Pejan, will you come up and give us some of that tone back? Yes, thank you. Okay, so I want to get step up. This gentleman standing here, truly a legend. I, I, I have to say, Jeff Cressman. Not only has did he for, for more than a decade been Carlos Santana's lead trombonist, but going back to high school together, um, and we played together. Um, but I mean, as a sound engineer, as a, as a producer, he produced my first album, actually. Uh, and he's here this evening, and we've known each other for well over 40, 45 years. Jeff Crestman, ladies and gentlemen. So, so, so. Thank you. 
actually they're registered as students again they are masters in their own right I mean Shaheen Shahbazi is an uh, uh, incredible composer of traditional Iranian music but also a teacher and an educator and a tar artist artist of the tar and string instruments and he's joined by only uh, um, just Sina, Devani, on turn back, the two of you. Now, please, come to me. Sina, Devani. Sina is a special um, guest tonight. He was not on the roster, but his brother, uh, Sam on that, who will perform with us later uh, on that, um, perhaps even tar this evening. This is almost like a jam session here at uh, But what, what an incredible one. It's uh, open ended. They're going to be uh, together um, performing a composition. And this is another first. The fact that Shaheen is in composition here, actually, he's, uh, he's uh, working on his masters in composition here. And the composition they're going to be playing this evening, 
it's, it's very historical because um, Mona Chantalaz. Are you here, Mona Chantalaz? Yes, it is. This is her composition. She's also a composer. composition. And the historical side of this is the fact that um, she's a bridge bringing, for the first time at this school, um, Western tradition, Western classical tradition, and bridging it to the I call it the sonic indigeneity. Still working on it. Um, this is the, the intonation of traditional Persian music, the forms. So as a learning community as we are, she's studying the Shaheen, but she's also uh, pairing up with Dr. Ellison, working on um, parallels and connections between Gregorian chant and, and other modal traditions and so uh, she's a true bridge. In, 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 in a, actually, a historical lineage here at San Francisco State that goes back to Henry Cowell. Henry Cowell, so you may have heard of, who actually had a young student here back in the late 30s, Lou Harrison, and helped him to, to, to discover again uh, the music of Charles Ives. And of course, we know that Lou Harrison worked with intonation inspired by sonic indigeneity, um, resonance from Gamelan, from Indonesia, from all parts of the world, and kept that cultural reference point when he worked within Western classical traditions. See, this is very important that this is the, the lineage that Mona is, uh, is bridging with us. So, thank you, sir. 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 Thank you. 
artists this evening have stories to tell. Um, I think they've chosen, though, to, to tell their stories through their music. This mic is here, but you can find them. They're all here. Um, and um, we've learned a lot. The community here at San Francisco State has learned very much about, um, about how, about what it, what it takes to, to work and master these instruments and to, to continue on. So, some of that.
And um, this, is a lot, this is not the official um, intermission, but um, as I tell the story to introduce uh, the next guest this evening, um, you know, you're welcome to you know, stretch your legs or um, take a break, because what you're about to hear next is, is very unique. Um, not that everything hasn't been special, but, but this particular dialogue you're going to hear is, uh, is sending something very important out there. So I want to take a couple of minutes before I introduce Dr. Pereira to you um, to say, you know, the doors are open and feel comfortable. There are many um, colleagues here, um, and, and I see, and family members, and I can go on with so many credits. But I do want to recognize one colleague, and that's our president, Dr. Lynn Mohammed. Dr. Lynn Mohammed. Thank you. Thank you for and supporting such, such an important event. Um, yeah, I have no problem with, you know, movement. I like movement. But I have to share something with you because it's a text that I, that I just got, uh, literally, in the last 24 hours, and I have to share this text with you. <laughs> and because my father is here tonight, where are you, Bob? marked the 50th anniversary of the 1973 Wounded Knee. Events where Davis Hall Jr. was there, working together to help clean up the corruption from within the government several governments, but the one in Iran that the women of Iran are leading towards cleaning up. He sends this text to all of us and to all the Iranians. Aho! Women are the backbone of the nations, givers of life, teachers of life, so generations can go on, you and me can live. I asked for his permission to tell you this story because after several days of, of ceremony, purification ceremony, with his guidance, I went up into Matopaha, which are the secret in Black Hills. This particular is very beautiful. And um, 
And then I, I, I was given permission to work on the pipe is not the correct word, it's chanupa. How many of you here um, know what chapok means? Chapok. When he told me this is chanupa, I said, well, my, my, uh, my uncles say chapok. So it's an interesting connection. But uh, this is a, a, a sacred object, the lifeblood of the Lakota people. And, and he allowed me to, to take this catalyte stone from this Minnesota quarry and, and make this um, and uh, offer it up in ceremony in Iran. Take it to Iran. This is in July. And my uh, other half, Yagone, and I just smoked Chanupa. No, no hallucinogenics in it or anything. It was just regular tobacco. At our ancestors' graves. And we went down there to Shahire, which is in the southern part of Iran, very old part of Tehran, I should say, Tehran. Um, and there too, at the oldest cemetery there, because we couldn't find the grave of Al Razi. Any of you know about Al Razi, inventor of alcohol? He is also a critic of the Islamic. Uh, that the, the clerics of his time couldn't find his grave, but we made our tobacco offering there and um, also took to the holy shrine where my uh, also relatives, ancestors are, are buried. And um, so um, I spoke to my father at the grave of Mahmoud Zofanu, my teacher. And the point of it is that Al Razi was from Shahriye. My father is from Shadere, both physicians. And it's inexplicable, but what we told Hamani gave me the rights to tell you this, that whatever questions I have for the ancestors, he said, don't ask, just do the work. And tonight we're doing the work, okay? Because something is happening, because within months, smoking the Chanukwa and praying for the, the ancestors of Lakota who know very well of government corruption and survival and resistance to help our people in Iran. And within, within three months, these protests, this movement. And all I was asking for were some sanction relief, you know, thinking maybe you could just do something with the U.S. government, help, help relieve some of the sanctions. But this is about the blood, you know. This is about standing up, owning up, and giving up. It's about surrender, you know, and, and, and uh, to the highest cause. And so um, all of this goes into my first day here. When John Carlos Perret, as a student on the electric bass, was ready to play for my uh, interview and help usher me in with his teachers, who was a faculty here, Dr. Bernard Horner, whom he learned songs from and become a scholar in powwow and intertribal uh, ceremony and uh, uh, among many other things. but. Uh, uh, carried on through all of the groups here on this stage to tonight. Now Chair of American Indian Studies, John Carlos Perret. So there's, there's more to that story, John Carlos, but I just felt that I wanted to take this moment on this stage. I never did anything like that. In fact, you and I never talked about anything like that. But I want to share that with you because I, I got a permission from, from an important teacher, and David Swallow Jr. Uh, he said, when, when you're done, you call me, you let me know how it went. <laughs> so uh, I would love it if you would uh, uh, share at some point what you're about to do, because this, this is what you're going to hear, is about um, that work between our ancestors and our relatives.
break or maybe some of you already have it's going to be 10 minutes uh, strict because we're a little behind but that's okay we we, let, we gave some cushion for some time we said 9 30 but what's going to happen next the next two large ensembles you, you don't want to miss i do want to say that dr correa uh, following in his father's footsteps jake correa and my father jamal mudira to make sure I, I said your name, my father Jamal Mordir. Um, very important uh, um, influences in our lives, and I uh, acknowledge that. And uh, also, uh, two sisters, uh, one sister is here, uh, Leila from the East Coast, and one of She made it. Yeah. I see that. She made it. We're all in the same community. My other sister, Rachel, is. Um, down in San Jose, and I really felt like this last piece was uh, 
medicine. It was medicine for my sister. sister Rachel quoted down in San Jose. Um, ethnic studies, I do want to mention before I ask our sister to come back up, there are a few people like Nazi Carmeli, who uh, would be here tonight, but who uh, couldn't, but he's made so much as possible. He can mention that. And also the slideshow that we're about to show while we set up for the next group. Um, so before she comes up, I do want to say that um, this hall was here. Um, it was just about a year old when the strikes happened in 68, 69, you know. And it was the students and then the students galvanizing faculty together who made structural change happen. That's allowing for this to happen tonight, over 54 years ago. And this brought about the first college of ethnic studies in the world and galvanized a whole movement that happened and that continues a legacy here at San Francisco State. And this, I just want to note, because he's, he's, he's recently just turned 90 years old, and that's John Handy from Oakland, the great alto saxophonist and composer, who taught the first black American music course here at San Francisco State, hired by the Black Student Union. You would think the music department, but it was the Black Student Union, and that was on the eve or during the strikes that he taught here. And I just wanted to give that shout out to, to Mr. Handy, who was also a student in the world. So thank you, Mr. Handy. So, thank you, Mr. Handy. so uh, take a nice, uh, oh, Paris is, uh, needs to come up and give a couple of announcements and then we'll take a short break. Um, it's your choice whether you stay or go during this slideshow, but I want to encourage you to stay because it's a very special gift that we're sharing with you. This is a slideshow. Do you let, it's hard to hear. Um, it's a slideshow that was projected on January 26th through 28th on the facade of the Asian Art Museum. It's uh, called Women, Life, Freedom, and it was organized by the Art Rise Collective, and it brought together a group of artists, scholars, and there was an open call for art. Um, most of the art you're gonna see in this uh, seven minute slideshow is from Iran, and none of the artists are identified because we wanna protect their anonymity, because of course, even the act of producing art and sharing it in Iran is dangerous today. Um, so I wanna thank Neda Nobari, who's a real friend to San Francisco State University, she endowed the Center for Iranian Diaspora Studies and has continuously brought art and a passion for education back to San Francisco State, even though she graduated from here uh, at least four decades ago. So um, thank you, Nenna Navari, who's not with us. Thank you to Mosaic Philanthropy that made it possible for these artists' work to be shown in such a beautiful way. Um, and these artists were also compensated for their work. And if any of you know how hard it is to get money to artists in Iran because of the sanctions, you know that this took a tremendous feat to support these artists. So what you're gonna see is the actual facade um, it, it was a slideshow designed for the facade of the Asian Art Museum, and this is only a portion of the artists, so if you'd like to see the whole exhibit, you should go to Mosaic Philanthropy on their Instagram or their website to see it. And then finally, before I stand down off the stage, I want to encourage any of you to sign our mailing list. We're a cool outfit. I mean, Hafez is cool, but so are we. The Center for Iranian Diaspora Studies. Thank you. Um, our mission is to share the stories and experiences of those who left Iran and who are um, adding to and contributing to this society. And everybody you saw on the stage tonight is part of that Iranian diaspora. I don't know if they're gonna go back to Iran, but in the meantime, they've made their mark here. And I think we need to like recognize that this is what diasporas do. They bring an excitement of energy, culture, 
and mixing. Um, and that speaks to Hafez's statement. And then finally, I want to say that I'm working on a documentary film. My friend Torange is in it called The Dawn is Too Far, Stories of Ameri Iranian American Life. We're hopefully going to finish in June. So if you want to be invited to the screening, you should also sign up on that mailing list right outside. And one last thing. Many of you are here, um, I know, who are Iranian, so you know what Noruz means to us every year, but especially this year. It's a, it's a symbol of, sign, it's a sign and a symbol of hope and renewal. Um, we celebrate the new year on the spring equinox, which is on Monday. These hyacinths, which haven't yet opened, they're the anticipation of beauty and openness and light and spring. Um, so I want to remind you that this is also a time of hope. And so we have to keep the hope alive for people everywhere, but especially in places like Iran and Afghanistan, where women have been especially struggling to have their voices heard. So thank you, and Noruz Piruz to all of you.
something to, to have to be represented. So, yes, I, I'm sure I'll get some emails and it will only help to, to fill in the gaps. So anyway, um, thank, thank you everyone. Now, um, the next gentleman I'm going to bring up, this group, the Bay Area Persian Music Ensemble, are his students. And he was a student here. In fact, he introduced me to Pejan, who introduced me to Shaheen, introduced me to Samila, and this fellow, Faraz Minui, also introduced me to Nassim and, and, and uh, Sirvan Mahoubi. So a lot of the students, they come from this one gentleman who corrected me, speaking of corrections. When I introduced his instrument to my class in this room, uh, Music 505, Music of the World's Peoples, that began back in the 30s with uh, Henry Cowles. Farrell said, I said, this is a, a hammered dulcimer. I introduced his instrument as a hammered dulcimer. He said, excuse me. He said, it's not a hammered dulcimer. Can you say santur? You know, it's a santur, you know. And I said, okay, you know. And he, um, so he's very, very important. Uh, and you never want to doubt this man. I learned that. You know. So I, I, some people in your life are difficult not to intersect with them, not being con continual learning from. So, Faraz Minui uh, has gone on also to play with uh, Yo Yo Ma's uh, Silkwood Ensemble and illustrious career. And he's so, so well respected in this community as a teacher <laughs> and an artist. And, um, and as you can see, he's, he's just spreading all of that, that art and, uh, and music in a very disciplined way. This is his group. Where, where are you, Faraz? Because that's, that's all the intro I have for you. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Group. All right. Um, hello, and uh, thank you, Hafez. Um, yes, my name is Faraz Minui, and 
I would like to just add a quick note here. We are very pleased to be performing for you tonight. Um, this is going to be our third public performance, Very Young, and uh, our website is bayareaparisianmusic.com and uh, it all started like this in the early 2020. I uh, said I'll be willing to coach an ensemble whose members are not uh, musicians by, pro by profession, uh, that means their job is not music but they spent a lot of time practicing this artwork. And so here we are today. Uh, thank you for your kind attention.
Oh. 
first uh, Persian student here, it's been 20 years ago, and, and this is the fruit of that. We realize that we're over time, so obviously um, feel comfortable if you have to go tomorrow's an early morning. We're going to stay, we're going to play the last piece, we're going to have our now long for the clowns, the queens, kings, all of you folks, uh, if you feel like uh, staying about 10 more minutes, um, we're going to get the stage ready and introduce Robin Zofanul and Persian to the piano, another historic event. But for those of you who have to go, thank you for coming. This was a huge, huge event. So, yes, as we get ready, um,
there. Someone, um, who I'm sure you're going to be hearing a, a lot more about and from, is from an illustrious Hindustani family of uh, a legacy of Hindustani music, North Indian classical music. His father worked together um, and had been over the campus for, for many years. And, and through Santa Cruz and his grandfather, his, his aunties, everyone in his family, uh, and he uh, and was a sitar and uh, tamba. He's also a wonderful jazz drummer, but also a, a, a great, uh, one is a theorist, composer, musicologist, philosopher. That's Kishav Atish. Atish. And here at the piano, Persian to the piano. And so on like this. The one and only Rahim Sarkhanu. Rahim Sarkhanu. He says Hasan Abashi, you know. It's been almost three hours. But once in a while. We, we never performed this live. We recorded it, we recorded it 30 years ago on the label came out at Stop 25, a label called Navai Mano, the People's Blues. And uh, tonight, we have Pichon here, on Tom Beck. Come in. Okay. That, that's just Josh Khalil. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we're going to uh, give you a rendition of it this evening. December 1st, before we...
Thank you. 
Sao Tân Nhật tại Ban Quốc Sao Tân Nhật. Thank you.